cinnamon bun. Uh, it really has been a while this time. <laughs> it really has. Um, I... Oh yeah, I forgot. I filmed this so long ago that I forgot that I was... Um, instead of tea, I had this like ginger and turmeric stuff because I think I was trying to prevent myself from getting ill because I think Pete had a cold. But I think I ended up getting it anyway. Um, <laughs> it's been a crazy month. So yeah, hi, <laughs> hello. Um, I filmed this at the start of June and I've been trying to get to recording this voiceover ever since. Um, and when is it? What, what day is it today? It's the 1st of July. <laughs> Um, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, oh this is my setting up a new bullet journal routine um, because I finished my journal. Um, so in this video I am setting up a new one so maybe we can talk about that a bit. Um, but yeah, as usual I'm just gonna uh, chat through a little bit of what I'm doing and uh, catch you up on what's been going on in my little life. Um, it's been weird because it's felt like there's like a million things like on the go and in some ways things are moving like really fast and there's been like big progress um, but like outwardly like on YouTube, on social media, it, in newsletters and Patreon and stuff it just kind of looks like I've been doing nothing which I don't love. Um, it creates a little bit of cognitive dissonance for me even though I know that like you know it's I, I'm not required to, even though I want to be creative and do creative work and obviously there's work I need to do to pay the bills, like I'm not required to like be doing it visibly or publicly to still be like a real person um, but I guess I'm just in such the habit of it now that I don't know it just feels weird when people can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so this was my little like year at a glance, like wheel, wheel of the year thing that I had in the front of my journal, of this old journal. Um, and I hadn't updated it because I like to fill in, like shade in as we move through each month to show the progress through the year. Um, and now I am just going, doing like the final sift through my old journal to make sure there's no open tasks. I mean, I do that every month anyway, so there shouldn't be, but just like checking if there's anything that I wanna to add to my mental inventory, which is basically my big to-do list in the long term. Um, and then also just like collections or like notes or thoughts that I want to save elsewhere. Um, so that took ages and um, yeah, like I, I wish I could share more of like daily log stuff, although maybe that would be interesting, I don't know, but like, Genuinely, my stuff is just, it's, I just have really personal stuff in there, so, um, there's not many, like, cute aesthetic spreads other than my monthlies, um, the rest of it is just, like, the mess of my life, um, and a lot of stuff that involves, like, other people that obviously I can't share, um, anyway, so yeah, um, what's been going on? I have been in this kind of weird transitional phase with um, my work and business for a while and it feels like I'm finally kind of coming out the end the other side of like this weird crossroads like overwhelmed like ah what do I do kind of phase um, so that's cool I'm looking at my notes that I made to record this voiceover on 16th of June so like what two weeks ago um, and I'm like mm, <laughs> this is kind of out of date now but oh well um, oh yeah and I also have been experimenting with archiving my journals um, using the bullet journal companion app um, because they have like a kind of scanning process and um, so since I've just finished this journal I was gonna archive it or I did archive it um, I use the bullet journal app or I did up until very recently um, they're like temporary log function so like when you're out and about if you're not at your journal you can add like a task bullet uh, an event or a note um, and they disappear within 72 hours so I got into the habit of like if I was out and about you know on the bus or something didn't want to get my journal out and try and write something down that's where I would make my quick notes on the go and then when I set up my daily log each day I had it as part of my routine to check that companion app 
for anything and transfer it because like I say it disappears after like 72 hours so it's not meant to be a permanent place um, but I found that really useful um, like I said here like the archiving process took ages because obviously it's like 200 pages or something um, so I think if I do that again I'm actually gonna archive the previous month's pages at the end of each month instead of waiting to do the whole journal and kind of break it up that way um but yeah to be honest like my uh i'm sure i'll get into this um my planning process like my organizational system is kind of changing at the moment um or it has been since i filmed this setup and so i'm not sure um what the role of my bullet journal is exactly going to be um in the future i don't think i'm going to stop journaling um but basically that kind of like daily daily log like um pen sieving you know like container for all of my stray thoughts kind of thing i've kind of got another system that i've been trying for that which has been working really well but also maybe has its downsides and i don't know if i'm gonna i don't know i don't know how it's gonna work yet so i'm yeah so we'll we'll see with that um but i guess like one of the things I did want to talk about in this video is the fact that I have realized that this is a finite series. <laughs> um, I've been thinking a lot about my output and my rhythm when it comes to creating things like videos or writing or whatever it is. Um, oh this is me printing out a new year at a glance, little wheel of the year. Um, I would love to do this uh, thing that I drew as a printable at some point but the resolution isn't right for that at the moment so um it's on my list if you want to harangue me about it if if that might make me do it faster or prioritize it sooner so feel free um but uh yeah at the moment I'd have to like redraw the entire thing at higher resolution for it to be like um good enough quality for print that I'd be happy giving it or selling it to other people so um Anyway, what was I saying? <laughs> ADHD train of thought is leaving the station and I am not on it. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, this this journal stuff. So I've been thinking a lot about like how, what is my like rhythm for creating? Like how often do I want to make, like how can I, I, I pr much prefer the word rhythm to schedule because the word schedule kind of like makes my um, very stubborn brain dig in its heels but I've been thinking about like you know getting not just doing things as and when all the time you know like having specific like checkpoints for creative work um, every month or every week or whatever um, and so I've been thinking about how much space I have for that and um, like what formats I want to work in and stuff and something that I have realized is I want to start thinking about things more in terms of collections of work instead of like small pieces and giant projects um, because in a lot of ways a big project is just a collection of smaller pieces <laughs> um, and I have found with things like this um, journal video stuff and um, poetry and like some other things that like the more I can focus on just this making the small pieces like in a fun sustainable way and like gradually building that up over time instead of trying to like sprint my way through massive projects um the better and because I've been thinking about lots of different creative mediums in terms of like collections or being these like ongoing collections um I kind of realized that this journal video series is kind of a collection and then I also had this thought of like well actually it doesn't need to be an infinite collection it doesn't need to continue on for the rest of time um and I'm at this actually is my 11th like cyclical bullet journaling video like plan with me um, and I would really like to get to 12. I'd really like to have done an entire year and then I would like to take a break and kind of wrap up that collection. Um, I think I want to call it a year in my bullet journal um, and I was thinking about maybe doing a kind of wrap up or something. 
um, of like, you know, takeaways and things I've learned from like a year of like basically the same setup for a year, which is wild, right? For bullet journaling, because people tend to change their stuff so much. But obviously, I hit on something that worked for a long time. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I might do like a wrap up video um, of like what I've learned, or maybe I'll just like do do that in the voiceover of the next video, the final one, the twelfth one. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this is really exciting because um, I have loved making these journal videos um, and I know that a lot of you who watch them, like, you know, enjoy them as part of your month. Um, but in some ways it's also, um, it's, it, I know the format really well now and so it's not super exciting for me to make really anymore um, because I've done it a lot. Um, and also it'll free up um, not having to get this same type of video out every month month will free up so much um, of my time and energy to finish a lot of the things that I've had to be put on the back burner because I've been focusing on maintaining a pace with these videos. Like I have so many other videos that I've like entirely filmed and never edited or mostly filmed and not quite finished and never managed to finish because like I would you know, finish the journal video of the month and then um, be like, okay, I can finally, like, I've got my, like, monthly stuff out of the way, I can finally get to this other more exciting video um, and then I'd work on that for a bit and then before I knew it, the month would end and I'd have to film another journal one again. And, um, yeah, so it just, it just takes up, like, even though I do have a rhythm down with these, like, it does still, it is still quite time consuming. Um, and also I was finding that some of the format stuff with my Patreon was not quite working because like we had the Clubhouse live stream um, which tended to be like me chatting about a topic or catching up with patrons um, about something um, in a very similar way to what I do in these voiceovers um, and I was finding that finding enough stuff to talk about <laughs> um, for both of those every single month was like getting to be like it was feeling like a bit of a stretch um, so I think changing format and like taking a break from that means that I'll have more energy and excitement to like do to, to put this into other things basically um, so I'm not going to say that I'm never going to make a bullet journal video again obviously I think I probably will still do one on occasion it's just not going to be like I am tying myself to this every month. I, I'm proud of this collection that I've put together. You know, I think they're they're good, nice, chill videos. Um, and I'm excited to like wrap up a collection and feel like it's kind of complete and tie a bow on that and then uh, look into what's next. Wow, so my laptop just fully crashed um, in the middle of recording this. Extremely rude. Um, like, on a, like everything stopped, would not respond to anything. Um, had to force shut it down and reboot and everything. But here I am once again. Um, oh, oh, um, stretching noises. Where was I? What was I saying? Um, yeah, so that's kind of, uh, or those were my notes from <laughs> two weeks ago. Um, what else has been going on? Um, what do I want to announce yet? Um, big stuff is going on on Patreon at the moment. I'm kind of like changing up um, what I make for Patreon. Um, and how we structure things for the patrons. So if you are a patron, um, thanks very much for, for sticking with me and uh, giving me feedback and uh, being excited for what's coming next. Um, 
I don't think I will get into the big announcements here at the moment, um, but know that patrons tend to get the first uh, first bits of chat with these things. Um, but yeah, so I've been thinking about that. Um, basically, thus far, like we've, for, my patron has been very low key, mostly just a way for people to support my work if they want to. Um, not so focused on benefits, um, because I have yeah. So I've got you know people can get their name in the credits of my videos. Um, we have a Discord server, and uh, I did like a monthly live stream called the Clubhouse. Um, but I have not been super happy with the format of the clubhouse for a while. Um, it feels like we've been trying to like meld these two different kind of functions of like, let's hang out and be social and interact versus like, let me share some ideas or things I've been thinking about or, you know, the constellation system or let's talk about the wheel of the year or kind of tools-esque content-y things. Um, and it's not felt like great for both of those um, because the, the folks coming live like don't get as much interaction because I'm kind of like monologuing like content stuff um, and then but then the replay like when people are re-watching for the the content stuff like also feels really slow because it's that live pace so it's a lot of like me responding to comments and stuff so I basically decided to split those up um, and kind of have like more of a like social interactive um, benefit like a co-working cafe um, on the discord and uh, starting what I'm calling for now which is probably gonna get a proper name at some point um, a patron exclusive library so basically like a, a, a patron only like part of my website probably um, where like a library of content basically um, you know where I have ideas or things that I want to share that don't necessarily fit into a video or that I want to release just to patrons for now um, especially stuff on the constellation system there's going to be a lot of that um, videos posts like whatever format makes sense um, for each of those things so I'm gonna be starting that and hopefully I'm planning on doing uh, something new for that every month and yeah I'm just kind of excited about making a bunch of changes for stuff that like I've been wanting to get around to for a really long time, right? But it's just felt like there's not been uh, the space for that for a long time. Um, either because I was like super focused on like running the academy stuff and then as I've talked about at length, I was sick for like three quarters of like this year, kind of. Um, and thankfully I'm feeling a lot better now. So I can actually, I'm, I'm kind of dealing with like backlog stuff that like built up while I was ill um, but then also finally able to like start the wheels turning on things that I'd be wanting to get to for a while. So that's cool. Thank you. 
what else? Okay, oh, oh yeah, um, me and Pete had our first year anniversary, um, which is bonkers. Honestly, can't believe it's been a full year. That's wild. Um, and it's kind of insane thinking about like, <laughs> how much we've changed, how much things have changed in like a year, like where we were, where we both were when we met and where we are now. Two completely different things, <laughs> two uh, completely different people even. Um, yeah, so that's cool and like in a good way. Um, imagine, imagine I was like, it's been a year and we've both only gotten worse. <laughs> Uh, we've made each other worse. Um, no, but in all honesty, like, yeah, in all seriousness, it's, yeah, it's nice. Um, we're doing good. And uh, what did we do again for our anniversary? We went to a fancy uh, restaurant, which we don't often do. Um, and I had oysters for, okay, not the first time, but listen. So like a lot of my family, are like really into seafood, right? And like I grew up like next to the sea, so like seafood is, yeah, it's a thing. Um, and and it kind of just is a thing generally in Scotland as well. We're kind of known for it. Um, Pete really likes oysters. I'd only tried one oyster in my life and that was at my mum's once. And like, you have to like cut because they have like, I guess like in a muscle it would be the foot, but I don't really know what it is. Is this, too, is this too graphic seafood chat for you guys? Um, basically, you need to cut it away from the shell before you serve it. Um, I think that's about one of the only things you do with oysters to serve them, but I don't know, I've never fucking done it. Um, but unfortunately, the one, the first one I ever tried, it hadn't cut properly away from the shell. So when I tried to like, you know, scoop it into my mouth, it got stuck in my throat and was like stuck in the shell and I had this horrible like weird choking experience and that was my first ever experience with oysters so I was like okay we're gonna try this again and they were nice I guess like I'd, I wouldn't like lose my mind over it but like for something to try once in a while sure um wow something just fell over in my flat I'm gonna have to investigate that ghost in a wee bit um but yeah so we had seafood stuff I had um mussels and chips with like you know that classic cream sauce thing um which i've not had in such a long time and they had gluten-free bread they gave me gluten-free bread with it so i got to for the first time in years got to like mop up the like weird creamy seafood sauce with bread which is so exciting because usually you don't get gluten-free bread um do you guys have mussels in the US? Is that a thing? Like the shellfish? The wee black clam guys? Or is that just a Scottish thing? I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm talking absolute nonsense to you right now. Um, it's a very common type of seafood here. <laughs> I don't know else. I don't know about elsewhere. Let me know in the comments, I guess. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so we had we had a nice meal. I way over ate. Like it, yeah, I should not have <laughs> yeah, I would not feel great after because we think we were gonna go to the cinema, but there wasn't really anything on um, And so we actually we went out for this like fancy dinner and then we're like shall we just go home and like play games and <laughs> Watch stuff um, like we always do uh, Pinky um, And so that's what we did we came home and like unexpectedly I can't remember how we got on to it, but like we ended up talking about Stargate and this is a blast from the past for me because like um, I was so into it. like Stargate was like my big for my first big like really nerdy like franchise that I was into like I yeah like I have seen every single episode of Stargate and all the movies and everything um, and I used to really love it like when I was like a teenager and stuff and even beyond that I guess um, but it's obviously so old now it's wild um, so I kind of can't remember what, how we started talking about that and I was like Pete, Stargate Atlantis is so good though and he is like I've seen one episode and it was really bad and I just don't believe that it's good and I'm like it's the best one okay it's the best one and here's my argument why and we ended up speaking about it to the point where I bigged it up so much that I was like I really want to watch it now <laughs> um are you game from game for some anniversary Stargate is that okay and so that's what we did for the rest of the day we watched Stargate Atlantis and it was super nostalgic for me, obviously not for Pete, um, and just fun. Um, 
I just, I love sci-fi, but it's like such cozy sci-fi. Um, in fact, like when I was a kid, like I remember like, um, some kids wanted to be astronauts when they grew up. Some kids wanted to be, I don't know, why, why can I only think of Pete examples? Firefighters or actors or um, adventurers. I wanted to write for Stargate. That was like my childhood dream. <laughs> what a nerd. Um, yeah, which actually is funny because like I'm kind of, well, it's not not a lot along the lines of something that we are doing at the moment, which is that Pete, Pete and I, I was trying to say me and Pete at the same time, me and Pete are uh, putting together a little one-shot game for some friends that we're going to run together, which is exciting. Um, basically using the Fun City model of um, I'm going to GM and Pete's going to run NPCs and antagonists. Um, and we asked our friends, like, what kind of genre do you want to play? Like, what kind of world do you want to play in if we put together a one-shot? And one friend was like, I want to do teen drama in space. <laughs> I want to do high school in space. Um, and then my brother was like, I want to do like fantasy, but like where we're all just like postmen or something <laughs> really like ordinary. Um, and so we're like, okay, well, what if we smash those together and you guys are teens in space with paper rounds? Um, and maybe on kind of some kind of space bikes. Um, and so we've been running with that and putting together a game <laughs> on that concept, which is wild. We're running it in Still Fleet because that's like the system that I've played the most in and it's space. Um, and it's going to be wild. So I think we've got, we're meant to have our session zero for some of the gang tomorrow. Um, and we're going to run them through making characters quickly. Um, and I'm trying this new index RPG method of like having all of the like locations or encounters or characters and stuff on index cards, um, which is cool and feels like a much more chill way of prepping. So we'll see how that goes. Um, like I've said many a time, I would like to start running tabletop games more regularly or like get more practice um, so that it isn't quite so terrifying <laughs> and difficult every time I do it um, but uh, yeah so this is kind of one step in that direction and uh, we'll see how it goes me and Pete trying to run something together that's going to be interesting <clears throat> okay I think most of the time when I've been doing this I've already done like my business planning for the month with Christy so like we've already kind of nailed down what tasks we're working on in the business so I can just write those in here and then I add like you know my other domains but we haven't done that yet because we're doing it tomorrow so I think what I'll just do instead is put in my other domains and then just leave space and then I can fill that in tomorrow which feels a bit weird and I won't have like I won't do my side quests I don't think there are going to be much side quests this month anyway so yeah, we'll start there, I guess. I might also just do this in this erasable pen, just in case I need to change things. kind of all my chat to be honest and there's still like a, a quite a good amount of video left at least of this current cut that I'm recording this on so um, I'll leave you with some smooth jazz as always um, for the rest of this video um, enjoy and yeah it's just me finishing up this spread putting together my uh, main quests for the month um, maybe I'll cut it down a bit and see if it, if possible um, but yeah, if I don't see you again till the end of the video, enjoy.
Okay, um, I think this is it. Not feeling as clear <laughs> on my like to-do list and tasks and projects for this month as I normally do, because I'm in this kind of transitional phase where I'm trying to figure out what direction to go in with things. But I'm gonna go with that for now. I might add side quests, like optional bonus things that I can do if and when I have the time or inclination here since I don't have a lot of space here, but I might also just leave this blank. I don't really care. Um, yeah, that's it for this month. I did go to boxing once already. Woohoo! And I did change my sheets! <laughs> okay. Okay, so final spread, because we have more than one. Oh yeah, there's a key here. I will probably make some more notes in a bit more detail in here. But, um, I will do that on my own time. Okay, yeah, so as usual, intention or notes or side quests, um, the monthly calendar, which ends up being my kind of like line a day. Uh, lunar lists, so that's my cyclical kind of like self-care list um, for the month. And then what I'm doing this month and what I'm working on, projects, quests, tasks, all of that. And they're divided by domains. So I've got Davice, which is financial, money, paid work. Um, Genero, which is creative. Uh, SME, which is not a domain, but that's the Story Magic Academy. I've got weekly stuff to do for that. Um, and then Socialis. I've got like a bunch of like birthdays and things to sort out. And Pete and me's first anniversary. So maybe we'll do something for that. Um, yeah, that's it. And I've already started my daily logs um, since it took me a couple of days to finish the setup. So just be continuing those. Welcome to the end of the video. Um, okay, quick things. What do I need to remind you of? Um, do, do, do. Oh yeah, um, I actually have done an interview with Kate Litterer of the Tending Year um, about the Constellation system because she's been using it and is a productivity coach um, or a slow productivity coach. Um, 
And so yeah, that's cool. Um, she sent it out to her newsletter, I think today actually, or it will be coming out today. Um, but I think she's also uh, posting it on her blog. So if I have a link for that, I will put it, if not on the screen, then in the description. Um, and what else has been going on? Uh, Oh yeah, like I say, the Patreon's getting an update soon, um, so keep an eye out for that, or head over, and if the stuff I've talked about in this video sounds good, then do join us. Um, and yeah, really the best way to keep up with what I'm doing and making and new stuff is my newsletter. Um, as I've mentioned before, um, my email list, I try to make my newsletters feel like letters, like fun and interesting and we do a little almanac update and um yeah so um if you want to keep up with stuff that's probably the best way and i think that's it yeah um hopefully the the next bullet journal video will not be quite so delayed um because i'm gonna be filming it like in the next week which is wild uh, yeah, okay, that's it. Um, take care of yourself. I hope things are going okay. And uh, I'll speak to you next time. Bye.